I'm going to share with you my first day at work experience as a provisional psychologist just so that those who are also becoming provisional psychologists have an idea of what to expect on their first day. It was quite an informative day. I obviously found out quite a bit and here's our little Freddy who wants to join in on the conversation. He has been annoying me since I've got home because he was left at home all day and he's not used to that. So it was quite an informative day. I was working alongside a practitioner who is obviously more experienced and further along in their journey to registration than I am and I was doing shadowing with her, which basically means that she was speaking with the client and with the client's permission, I was sitting alongside and um, out of the client's view, if we could do it that way, just so that the focus was more on um, the therapist as opposed to me being in the room as well. And I would just quietly observe, take notes and listen to what was being said and what psychological theoretical principles my um, colleague was implementing during the session so that then obviously I could implement them myself and see which ones were effective and it's always a case-by-case -case basis though like what works for me may not work for her vice versa and then of course what works with some clients won't work with all clients what you need to expect from today is that you will be doing mostly observing and you'll just be going alongside to um, meet each of the clients sometimes you'll be in a situation where the clients will actually be coming to you so quite similar to, similar to traditional therapy and in that case the clients are basically coming to you or you're going to visit each of the clients in my case today we were going to each of the clients so we, we were visiting them and doing home visits during each session i was just taking notes and just observing. What I could recommend for you for your first day would be just to ensure that you really just blend into the background as much as you can. You wanna just be observing. Occasionally the clients would speak to me directly and then obviously I would reciprocate. And for the clients that continually kept speaking with me, what I would do is then just divert it back to my superior so that it was clear that the relationship and the communication was going to occur between her and the client and that I was just observing. Some, some tips that I would recommend for somebody doing their first day as a provisional psychologist is one, wear a watch. Um, you want to be able to discreetly look at the time without picking up your phone. Two, put your phone away, turn it on silent, just don't don't have your phone present. Um, I actually didn't reach for my phone at all, all day until lunchtime when I was eating with my uh, colleague and she took out her phone. And it was only then when I saw her on her phone that I was like, okay, I can use my phone too. You just wanna make a really good impression. You're obviously are new to this practice and you want to show how professional you are and just how dedicated you are to being um, stringent to all of the regulations, all of the ethical guidelines. You wanna show good theoretical knowledge as well. So you just really wanna be doing the opposite of slacking off. Do try and dress conservatively. I was briefed prior to my first day today and told that I could dress quite casually. I was even told that it's acceptable to wear jeans. Did I wear jeans? No. I wore black suit pants that are quite fitted and I wore this. I have literally have just finished and I'm here sharing and reflecting my experience back to you. I would shy away from um, like this is quite a bright jacket, but it's not too loud or too obnoxious or it's not too attention seeking. And the reason that you don't want to be wearing something that's attention seeking is because the session is not about you. The session is about the client and you don't want to be a barrier. You don't want to be a distraction for their flow of thought. 
And if they're starting to really share with you and you're really starting to build therapeutic rapport, and then all of a sudden they just sort of notice your jacket and it will just take away their train of thought. It will bring the attention to you. It will bring the attention to what you're wearing. So I always sort of dress um, quite colorful. So this is quite muted for me. And I also would not be wearing design, like you can wear designer clothes, absolutely. But there's no need to have your jacket saying Dior, Dior written all over it. And also I think it's a bit more tasteful to wear designer clothes that don't have the labels all over them just a personal preference but the reason why as well that you don't want to be showing off to everyone that you're in wearing designer clothes is because you're often working with vulnerable and at-risk groups including those that are economically and financially vulnerable and it's just i don't think it's fair to be walking in wearing I don't know, a $2,000 jacket when the person that you're speaking with might be experiencing incredible financial burden and, and that's having a consequential impact on their emotional and mental state. So I just think it's in poor taste. You also, you can't see now, but I am wearing sneakers. So the reason that you want to wear sneakers is because you want to show that at any given moment you're ready to jump, literally jump to anything. So oftentimes during a provisional um, psychology internship, you might need to literally jump on the trampoline with children and you want to show and communicate that you're willing and ready to do anything at any given notice. So high heels are not a great idea. I was doing quite a bit of walking today and it was raining. There were a lot of stairs as well. So I just don't recommend wearing high heels. And again, it's just gonna make you appear to be maybe quite intimidating or again, the attention's just gonna be back to what you're wearing and it's back to you as opposed to being focused on the client, which is very important. Yeah, so I obviously wore sneakers for my attire, you can see in this full length picture here, how glamorous I look today. We are in the middle of COVID. We just had an outbreak and we're working with a at-risk population. So obviously we need to ensure that we're vaccinated. We need to ensure that we are really um, stringent with the, and compliant with the hygienic um, regulations. And also I just wore very minimal makeup today. So there's literally, I think I have a little bit of mascara and that's it, a bit of um, lip liner and the mascara all came off anyway because we had to wear goggles and they just bogged up. And I, you just, it's things like this that you just, you just need to be prepared for. My hair, I put it all up. Um, I have very long hair down to my waist and again, because I don't want the focus to be on my hair, I tied it all back because this is about our clients and our sessions. It's very important. So each of the sessions that we were in today went for about 45 minutes to 50 minutes. And the clients all had different presentations as well. Sometimes we would go from session to session and then take notes after and other times it would be do a session take notes so really have some questions ready for your um the person that you're shadowing with the person people that you're working with today just to show that you're interested and also because you do actually need to find out quite a lot of things about your new role so i needed to find out about a recommended professional indemnity insurance. I was able to get a bit more insight into that today because I had that question prepared and I've been doing some research too. Get to know your colleague well as well because they have some valuable insight. They're going to be your ally. When things get really tough, you can actually confide in them quite a lot. Whereas obviously due to client confidentiality, you're not actually able to share a whole lot with anyone. Even like what I'm saying to you today is obviously you 
wouldn't even know where I was working today. And oftentimes, like when you're working with these with the clients, their stories are quite upsetting. There was one particular client today, and I could just see the sadness and the pain, and I found it very emotionally taxing for myself. But after the session, I spoke with my colleague and we were able to sort of work on it together and I guess like through communicating and, and verbalizing those internal feelings you're able to release them to some extent so relationships with your peers is very important also obviously show up on time and pack a lunch if you can I was there for the full day which was about six hours and I packed my lunch because you just don't know if you're going to be able to go somewhere and get food. Like you just don't really know what the situation is. And the last thing you want is to be sitting there starving or anything like that. So um, ensure that you've got adequate food. And then you need to exercise some self-care as well. So afterwards I did a few things that are really quite stress relieving for myself. I made sure to write in my trusted journal. Um, I'm very into journal writing. I think it's really important, particularly as a psychologist, you really do need to do quite a lot of the personal reflecting just to ensure there's minimal counter-transference with our clients and to ensure that there's no like bias going in there as well. So I wrote in my diary um, took my dog for a walk, just things that are very quite nourishing for me and they normalize my emotions too, which is also important. So that's essentially my recommendations for your first day as a provisional psychologist. Essentially, wear a watch, take a notebook, observe, blend into the background, focus on the client, be prepared with questions, dress the part, practice self-care, pack lunch, make friends with your colleagues and get answers to your questions. I hope that anyone else that is going down the provisional psychologist journey that you're enjoying it and bringing value to the lives of everyone that you're working with including value to your own working experience. I'll see you next time.